Welcome to a two-part Sparks 1524 looking at the USS Alabama Battleship Memorial Park. I'm Nathaniel Miller coming to you from scenic, sunny, and stunningly satisfying Niceville, Florida. USS Alabama was donated to the state of Alabama in 1964 to become a museum ship. The ship and Battleship Memorial Park opened in 1965. For the first few years, the Alabama was a lonely sentinel guarding Mobile Bay. However, in 1969, she was joined by the submarine USS Drum. The park was off and running. As you drive east or west along Interstate 10, you'll clearly see the Alabama guarding the entrance to the bay as you zip along. However, if you take some time to drive and over and visit the park, you'll discover that this naval history park has grown to include something for almost everyone. For a park centered on naval history, it has artifacts from the Air Force, the Coast Guard, and the U.S. Army, as well as the Navy and Marine Corps. When you drive into the park, the first thing you'll notice, of course, is the Alabama herself and the submarine USS Drum, now in permanent dry dock. But if you look in the shadow of the Alabama, you will see several tanks and artillery pieces. Once you enter the aircraft pavilion, where you'll also buy your admission tickets, you'll be surrounded by a plethora of planes permanently proclaiming aviation history. You'll be able to see aircraft such as a Vought OS-2U Kingfisher float plane, You'll also see an AD-4 Sky Raider. Now this was a piston-powered aircraft built for World War II. It came online, however, after the war ended. This aircraft was so powerful, though, it held its own into the jet age, serving in the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps until the 1970s. Once you've completed your tour of the Aviation Pavilion, I recommend you start by going to the USS Drum. The oldest Gato-class submarine still in existence, the Drum was commissioned one month before the attack on Pearl Harbor. It's a little known fact, but the submarines were our only line of defense for several months following that attack until our surface forces were rebuilt. The Drum herself is the eighth highest scoring submarine of the U.S. fleet during the war. She sank over 80,580 tons of enemy shipping. She also brought home all of her sailors on her 13 war patrols. Once you've examined the Drum's external features, climb the ladder and head aboard. You'll enter the ship through her forward torpedo room, perhaps one of the most famous rooms on any submarine. The museum staff and the volunteers work very hard to keep the drum ship shape. The bright work is all gleaming, and it's not too hard to imagine a few sailors standing at attention in their dress whites, waiting for an admiral to conduct an inspection. Of course, one of the things most people remark about submarines, especially the World War II submarines, is how cramped they are. These boats were not built for space or comfort, they were built to seek out an enemy. They did this by hiding underwater during the day and running on the surface at night. By day, the men would be breathing air that was increasingly stale while the boat ran on batteries. Once the night fell, however, the boat could surface, refreshen its air, and use its diesel engines to run across the water while charging her batteries. While you're in the drum, you'll be able to tour the control room where the ship was piloted, and you'll notice there are several control wheels. The drum and other submarines like her are not piloted by a single sailor, but by a team of sailors working together to move the boat in the three dimensions she operated in when underwater. You'll have a chance to tour the engine room and see the diesel engines that powered the boat while she was running on the surface. Finally, you'll enter the aft torpedo room. Take a look around once again and notice the bunks, or the racks as we see in the Navy, that are held up in storage against the bulkheads. At night, these would be lowered and the sailors would sleep on them. Right above the torpedoes, they were ready to fire at the enemy. Part two of this will take you aboard the mighty Alabama herself last of the South Dakota class and one of the most famous museum ships in the United States today. Until then, I thank you for your attention. If you're interested in visiting the USS Alabama Battleship Memorial Park, I have linked their website down below. Please take a look at them. Also, if you're interested in reading more about my adventures, part one of my column is also linked down below. Until part two, when we go aboard the Alabama, have a fine Navy day and remember to go and do great things.